scripture because it's really, really important for us to keep a script to memorization. All right. And then whenever you are, wherever you are watching from, go ahead and click it on our live.mt Zion live site, and then you should be able to see us from there without any trouble at all. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and prepare our heart to meet the Lord our God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, I come before you tonight. First, I just want to surrender my heart. I surrender my mind. I surrender everything for you to use me, oh, Father God, as I prepare to teach you saying this lesson. I pray, oh, Father God, for each and every one of our listening here, and everyone who took the time to learn from you today, may you pour out the spirit of discernment and wisdom upon our We are completely surrendering over to you. May you remove worldly distraction from our mind and from our hearts so that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. May you pour out your Holy Spirit to give strength for native change into our hearts and our minds tonight, as long as we are listening to your words, oh, Father God so that we can become both door and ear of the word. I pray for everyone who is listening and watching right now, that whatever, regardless of what they are going to, that you will take over it, and that you would allow your peace as a past all understanding to intervene in their situation. Father, I just pray for a divine breakthrough into the heart of everyone who is listening today. I pray for comfort and peace, so that no matter what they are going to, just being right here in your presence will bring them comfort and peace. I thank you, Lord. I give all honor and glory to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 And so we have been going to a series that the, for the last four weeks, we have been going to the series at Mount Zion. He made a series of stack of I am a church member. I'm using this book from Thomas Raynor. I am a church member. So it's an interesting book, you know, for us to learn what it means or what it is to be a church member because church membership, you know, consists of so many definitions. Everyone have a definition of what church membership is. And so what we are looking at is really the biblical foundation of church membership. I'm not following this book completely, but I'm using it as a source or a foundation for us to get started on the church membership. And as we go to this book, tonight lesson, the topic of tonight lesson will be, I'll be a functioning church member. I'll be a functioning church member. There are so many other words that we can use for function. It could be active. It could be, um, you know, um, uh, workable. Um, there's so many different words, but pretty much what function is mean is that you're using your giftedness and your servant in the house of God. But before we even jump into all of that, it's so important for us to remember what church member means. Many of us does not understand what it means to become a church member. Do we even need to be a church member? Why? Why do we even need to join a church? I can be a Christian all on my own. That is something that we all believe and think. And those of us who are in certain generation who's never even been in church, don't even know or even see the importance of church. But of course, one day we all will be seeing that. But our job today is to prepare you so you can know it before it's too late. What is church membership and why do we need it? Over the pandemic, I had the idea that we could all be Christian on our home based on what we had to do. I mean, we all were home. Churches were locked down. So how could we do about that? But what it opened our minds to an understanding that church is not the building. It's the people of God. And that's what church membership is. It means that when you choose to walk with Jesus Christ and invite Christ into your life as your personal savior, you become a part of his body. And that's the major function and the reason for church membership is that we are a part of the body of Christ Jesus. Now, many people call it different words, you know, we are all, all the, all the part, but each of our, our parts of our body of our member, some people will say um, the body itself, and some people will call it faith community. Some people will call it non-denominational gathering. There's all these different words, but the representation of the people of God who choose to walk with Jesus Christ coming together as one is church because Christ said on this rock, I bring my church. And so eventually that's what church means. But there are people who gather together and do the same thing in church, but they don't call themselves church because they want to appeal to society, you know, so that people can come in and be a part of their church. But we want to stick to the biblical foundation of what the Holy Spirit leads us, or else we will no longer be different than the world. 
we will be just like the world. And so the basic thing for us to understand is what a church is. A church is the body of people who come together with the belief in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They believe that he was died, crucified, resurrected, and ascended into heaven, and God the Father Almighty. They believe that one day he will come back and judge this world. They believe that he is their Lord and Savior. Now, di different denominations may expand in that belief. They may change that belief. But all together, that's what church means completely. All right? As we think about what church means, now what it means tonight for us to talk about, I'm a functioning body member of that body of Christ Jesus. Why? Why do we need to function? Why do we need to be active member of Christ's body? Isn't it sufficient that you believe in Christ Jesus as your personal savior? And so that's enough for me to go to heaven. No, it's not. I notice that because Christ tells us over and over, it's not a joke about believing and calling on my name. It's doing what I command you to do. And so the things that we do as a church is what Christ commands us to do. To be a functioning member, allow you not just to walk into your giftedness and the purpose that you were created for, but it grants you peace and meaningfulness. Or you will just walk around thinking life is so short and so meaningless. I just live and I die. But even the richest man, the most wisest man and richest man that ever lived on this earth, King Solomon, tell you, life is meaningless without God. He had everything, obtain everything, experience everything, but realize that without God, your life is meaningless. And so what does that mean? That it's intrinsic that you come back to the one who created you. And when you do so, when you fully do so, you are stepping from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Into the kingdom of life is required for you to do something. That's what church membership means. Now you become a part of the kingdom culture. Like I said, there are so many other words for people to call it. The gathering of the saints, um, the non-denominational, so many different things. But obviously the main thing that Christ wanted you to call it is his church, his body. And so to become a functioning part of Christ's body, it means that we have to recognize our portion there. And the first thing I want to let you understand is membership means that we are all necessary part of a whole. We are all necessary part of the whole. And we take that from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 28. Let me read that from you from the New Living Translation. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 28. Here is what it says. It says, all of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is part of it. Here are some of the parts that God, God has appointed for the church. Hmm. First, our apostle. Second, our prophet. Third, our teacher. And then those who do miracle, and those who have the gift of healing, and those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership and those who speak in unknown languages. God will not give us these parts in his body for us to do nothing with it, right? So functioning me church member means every single one of us have a part to play. It's necessary, it's important. No matter how small it is, you know, we can't say, well, the prophet is more important than the teacher, or we can't say the miracle worker is more important than the leader, or we can't say any one of these are more important because we are necessary and needed to function for the body of Christ to stick together. So the hand, the foot, the ears, they're all needed and necessary. That means you, no matter what role you play, are needed and necessary. But I want to touch base on something here. And sometimes we go to church and we serve in different roles or we do different things or we have different titles and different functions. Regardless of what you do, to, for you to fit within the roles that God assigned you to, you must know your giftedness. That mean you have to understand and know what your spiritual gift are. Otherwise, you're just functioning in the capacity that you want to function or you believe you need to function in. I remember when I was a young adult in church, um, actually, I wasn't a young adult anymore. I was, well, yeah, I was a young adult. But um, I served in seven different ministries because I feel the need to serve. I feel the need to do more for God. 
but I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and so I end up in all these different ministries that I didn't even function well in, you know. Um, I was on the missionary, I was the hospitality team, I was a stewardess, you know, I helped to put up all the stuff in there. I was on the young adult ministry and I was in coming to Bible study. So I was in all these different roles I was playing. But even though I wasn't in the role that God called me to, it helps me to see and know what those other roles are and how it can work within my giftedness. When I finally knew what my spiritual gift was, it lets me shift my focus. So I become a church school, a church school teacher. I stayed in the missionary while I was a church school teacher so I could teach the missionary in the missionary society. But then I start cutting away from those things that was draining or overusing my gift so I can function into the way that God wants me to function. And that's what made me a necessary a church member. Sometimes it's good for us to do various roles because, hey, I was always a singer, always being in the choir, right? But what if God wants you to move from being in the choir to be a worship leader? What if God wants you to move from being in the choir to start prophesying to his people? So that is why it's so important for us to know the role that God has signed for us to play. When we are not working as a functioning part of Christ, a necessary part of a whole body of Christ, Jesus, we start feeling left out. We start believing church is meaningless because we are not playing that role that allows us to grow close to the God. We are not playing that role that allows us to get to know who God is. Instead, we are just carrying ourselves back and forth, trying to choose and, you know, decide where we want to be. But the Bible tells us that God has signed a role to you. Sometimes we have prophet walks in around. And they're not doing anything. They're becoming trustees or they're cleaning up. But God placed them into his house to prophesy to his people. But they're not using that gift because they don't know they have the gift, right? You have people who are pastors in churches, but they're not pastoring people. You know, they may be teaching or or they may be becoming a choir, singing on a choir, or they may have started to join the party. But God called them to be care, provide pastoral care. Not just the lead pastor is the pastor in the church. There are various members who can play in the role of pastoral care if they walk into their giftedness. Hmm. Yes. And so I want you to just think about that. Where are you necessary in God's body? Where are you necessary? Because all of us, as I said, means that we are a necessary part of a whole, a big part of a whole. And the second thing about membership, the second membership thing we're going to do is that membership means that we are different, but we still learn together. Let's go back to that scripture. Membership means we are different, but still work together. Let's look at Let's look at that scripture. It's 1 Corinthians 12, verses 26. And here is what it says. If one part suffer, all parts suffer with it. Mm. And if one part is honor, all parts are glad. And so when you look at that, oh my goodness, this is so important. When you think about that, people will say, um, you know, this leader is doing such an excellent job. And so we celebrate that leader. But what we are all supposed to do is celebrating ourselves. Because if one person in the church is doing an excellent job, it's the whole church that's doing an excellent job. That's how we work together as a part of the whole. We celebrate those who need to be celebrated. Those who are struggling, we struggle with them. And so that's how the church gets to come together in a unique portion that is different from the world. Yes, it says we are all part of the whole. And so if one person suffers, we all suffer. And that also reminds us of something that we can put down each other for those who are not doing well. Instead, we take the time to build them up or do what is necessary for those people to become successful. And so all memberships are different. Also into the same of you could be male, it could be female. Everybody has a different DNA, but we all come together to work together anyway. Some people call that the teams in the church, but still it's really just the full body of Christ Jesus allowing us to do his work. The next thing and in this book that let us become church members is to know that everything, every single thing, Woo! Not on Sunday, not on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every single thing, every day, everything we do is based on the biblical foundation of love. 
the biblical foundation of love. Not the love that we say, not the love that we feel, but the biblical foundation of love. And that is found in 1 Corinthians 13. I'm going to read verses 4 to 5 to you here. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 5 C. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wrong. Whoa, the word of God. And so when I looked at this, the first thing that really come into my heart and mind is to understand it. Oh, Christ's body function. It says love is patient. And so if I am a new part of the and portion of the church, right? And that is the people who help, the people who do things to serve. Say I'm a new member and I now decided that I'm going to do things to serve, but I am still working and being a believer. I am still struggling with my life that is complete mess, right? I'm still walking around trying to understand this new thing called Christ Jesus. But at the same time, the spirits that I am placed in you right here within the end of the body of Christ Jesus. So whatever you are supposed to do, you are supposed supposed to be serving. Does that person have to hold back and wait until their mess is cleaned up before they serve? No. Everyone get a chance to do anything. You don't have to have a perfect life for you to serve God's purpose. But I want us to remember the reason why Christ gave us those gifts is not for us to help ourselves, but for us to help others. When we focus on fixing our life before we can serve fully in the body of Christ, it's not because we want to serve God, but because we are being on our own selfish mission. But Christ's church is only about Christ. And many churches today, they lost that focus. People are out there pursuing their purpose. You know, they become believers and then they decided that, whoa, I want to go do such and such and such in the church. But it's not what you want to do. It's your purpose that God created you for. Unless you are serving in the position and the place that, you know, show that you love God and his people, you're always going to struggle in your life. It's always going to struggle in your life as a believer. Because that joy is going to be one where it's just selfish. It's going to be one where you just want to please yourself. And there is nothing wrong with failing and being selfish sometimes. All human beings have some form of selfishness. But when it comes to serving God in our church, everything we do and say must be based on love. And so if we're saying that we love God, but we are not loving others, then our love for God is not genuine. If we say we love others, but we are not serving them, then our love for others is not genuine. Love is also patient. And so when we keep judging people and say, well, that leader didn't do ABC or that member didn't do ABC, we are not patiently allowing the spirit to work with them. Everyone grow in their whole way. But what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter your maturity level, the God can still use you. And so no matter what mess you are and you're placed into the hand, you can still serve as the hand. But we, the body, has to be patiently waiting for that person to do the right thing. We don't put that person outside because the person is not doing well. We don't put that person down because they're not serving well. We don't lay out a list of, you know, judgment on that person. As people of God, everything we do and say must be based on the foundation of love. We can't grow as a church until we learn to genuinely love one another. We find so many faults with people in God's house, but we sometimes forget the most basic thing of all. God made everyone there. Every single person in God's house is made by him, created by him, and for him. He lays the purpose for his children. And so it doesn't matter what I do, I know I'm a child of God. And it doesn't matter what you do, I know you are a child of God. And so I have to love you because I know God loved me. But when you find fault with people inside of your churches, it's because we are not functioning as a full body of Christ Jesus. When we bring Christ back in there, then everyone can serve with love, with obedience, and we will look in each other with the same eye that God look at us, true unconditional love. Without love, we can't really label ourselves children of God. But that doesn't mean that you got to be perfect, right? 
some people struggle to love because you never know what love is. And people who grow, grow up in toxic environment never really experience what love is, but they are invited to experience the love of Jesus Christ. So back to the word patient. While God is working in them, we have to have an open heart to allow them to grow in his time, in his way. But simple believing that you are immature doesn't believe that you can't serve. You understand what I'm saying? You can still walk into the world that Christ gave you while you're growing to be more like he made you. The responsibility of everyone else in that body is to be patient with that person. The next word that we look at is love is kind. You see some mean people in church. <laughs> people roll their eyes at you. People who come in with the wrong intention, either to put you down or to just complain about the things you do. How is that being kind? But like I said, we don't judge people. We give them time to learn what is kindness. And sometimes, oh my goodness, people come from homes of abuse, never experience what kindness. I remember my first year as a teacher, I had this problem students. Because of that students, I wanted to quit so much. After the fourth, after the fourth time of trying to quit, my principal decided to sit down with me and talk to me. And she said, I'm gonna share something with you. But you are the first time that I have seen this child in a class of more than a month. And she said, he may act out because you are kind. And he'd never experienced kindness with anyone else. And I was really taken back by that. I was thinking, what about experience? But she reminds me, you don't know where these people are coming from. Kindness is hard for them. But guess what? When you keep being kind, it rubs off on that person. And they get to understand this is what the great God life is. I want to be kind like him. Hmm. I want to be kind like that guy. So you keep being kind. Don't expect kindness from people. People will say, I'll do good to you if you do good to me. That's not what the Bible says that God wants his children to do. No. It's what God really wants his children to do is for you to treat others with love, with no expectation of them loving you back or being kind to you. So still be kind. Still be patient. It doesn't matter how you are treated. Yes, it's difficult to do as human. But I'm going to share with you at the end, how do we grow into these things? How do we have genuine love for one another? How do we be patient, be kind, not jealous, not boastful or proud? You know, Christ is so amazing because when I read these things, I realize our perfect function as churches if we follow it. Think about it. If we are not jealous of each other's giftedness, then each of us can honor and use our giftedness in a powerful way. Because God called you in a specific giftedness. You alone have that gift. You alone have that gift in the ways that he wants you to use it. So there's no need for the hand to be jealous over the eye. Or the eye to be jealous over the neck. Or the neck to be jealous over the foot. Right? Everything combined together. When we honor one another. When we celebrate one another. When we cheer on one another. That's how the church grows. Regardless of your motives. If God wants the church to grow, God is going to let it grow. If God wants the people to grow closer to him, he will, when they seek him out and they need him. And so everything we do or say must be based on the biblical foundation of love. I put biblical in there because I know sometimes we see love as a different thing. <laughs> overall, finally, overall, here is something I need everyone to know. Biblical members are functioning members. I notice I said biblical. And the scripture that we are going to look at for that is same 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26. Now I'm not going to read the whole thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 20 to 26. But if you look at the slide, it says the foot, the hand, the ears, the eyes, and the nose, right? Biblical members all play a role in each of those. You can be a church member in your own way. You can be a church member in the world's way. You can be a church member in your denomination way. <laughs> but to be a biblical church member, you should be following and looking and reading, observing and living 1 Corinthians 12. In 1 Corinthians,
Corinthians 12, verses 26. The first thing we notice in verses 20, 12, verses 12 to 26. Verses 12 to 26, the first thing we notice, it says, one body with many parts. But it also said, right here in verses 13, some of us are Jew, some of us are Gentile, some of us are slave, and some are suffer free. But we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Biblical church member, understand that. And everything in first Corinthians chapter, first Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26. If you read, take some time to read it. You get to understand all of these mean that the body of Christ function together. The foot go out and share the gospel. The foot teach, evangelize. The foot take us to visit anywhere else we want to go. The hands, they serve, they grab things, they do stuff, they go out there and they live stuff. The years, discerning things, you know, someone come in and visit a church or say something and you can discern and hear the demonic spirit in that person and you can immediately pray and rebuke that person. Now. And that is why today so many demons are walking around in people because church members are not functioning the way they should so that they can honest the power to hear them, discern them and remove them. The highest the eyes need to see and know the truth of God. The nose need to smell out some of those stuff that's going around. <laughs> but the body, yes, the body of Christ has many different functions. Biblical church members are functioning members. There is no such thing as inactive member. The world make up those things. I see when you come into the body of Christ Jesus, you should feel the love of God in your heart so much. As you grow closer to him, as you serve him, as you walk with him, as you read your Bible, as you pray, as you go to church, you feel the desire to serve and do stuff for God. You know, we often talk about God is so good to me. But what are we doing to show God that we appreciate his goodness? Biblical church members are functioning members. You should be serving in a certain capacity of the body of Christ. And remember this, it's about what the body of Christ needs. It's not what might make believe assignment and role that's given to you. You know, people, you may come into the church and people may assign you this role to do. But if it's not biblical, it won't, it won't impress the growth of Christ's body. You have to serve in these roles and capacity that God gave us to do. The Bible tells us of all these roles. If you read the Bible, you'll see them in various, in, in the churches in Corinthians, or churches in Ephesians. You get to know what these roles are. Teachers, um, leaders, administrators. All those are the spiritual gift, the role that God gave the body to function. You cannot function as church member outside of a church. When you go everywhere you go, you are a church member. But you can be just a church member in your own eyes, in the eyes of the world, or you can be a biblical church member. For you to be a functioning church member, you need to know what your spiritual gifts are. You can't just decide to get up and decide, okay, I am going to be a a choir director right because i can sing i can carry a tune um i know how to sing pretty well and i know how to lead people into worship that's wonderful but is that what god called you to do many people struggle in the role that they stepped up to do on their own but until you are working in the capacity or the giftedness that is given to you by the holy spirit you will always struggle into your role. And now, as I said at the beginning of this lesson, many of us believe we can be Christian on our own. You can't do that. You have to be a part of Christ's body for you to function as Christ. And the best way for you to be a part of Christ's body is a biblical member, and that is to be a functioning church member. And now we know all of these things to the scripture in 1 Corinthians 12. Now we may ask ourselves, how do we do this? How do I apply this to my life? How do I become a functioning church member? Know what your spiritual gifts are. 
That's the first and most important thing for you to do. How do you know what your spiritual gifts are? There's various ways. You know, there is um, spiritual gift tests. There is books about spiritual gifts. But the best way for you to know is to consistently pray on that one thing. Fast and pray for a whole week. Ask God to show him what your gifts are. But then you can also use those tools that are set aside because those people who create those tools are lead by the Holy Spirit to do it. So you have the resource to use. So that's the first and most important thing. The second thing that you should do is seek to love one another. Regardless of how you feel about people, the genuine love of God is necessary for you to, role, to play in any role. So even if you decided that I'm going to start working to my gift of prophecy, and keep in mind that most of us receive more than one gift. Once in a while, maybe one person will have one powerful gift, you know, but most of us have more than one spiritual gift. Now, think, now what if we decided as we are working in each of these giftedness or we are doing whatever we are, we are wanting to do, we become so good. We become an expert, you know, like you become an expert of teaching, but you have no love then your giftedness is meaningless. Love is the foundation. And so if you feel you're having a hard time loving people, that's normal. Yes, it's hard to love some people, especially those who are mean or those who are, but we must remember, you are not perfect. And God loves you just the way you are. And so what you must do is ask God to help you confess to him lord I'm, I'm struggling to love these people who don't like me i need to show them genuine compassionate love you see when you do that then your giftedness work even so much better because whatever your giftedness is when you are using it out of love it helps you to grow close to the god everything that god asks us to do is for our good for our purpose but it's also to give him glory to loving one another. And so it doesn't matter what you do, the end result of it will make you a better person as it will make someone else a better person. Amen? And so those are the two things. You must know your giftedness. Seek to genuinely love one another, no matter how difficult it may be. And function and serve in the giftedness that God has given to you with love. Those are the three things that you need to know to be a biblical church member. And so I want to encourage you to take some time to read the scripture and examine what the Bible says about this. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and you can come up with your own way of how God wants you to be a church member. Each of us are different stage in our spiritual life, but we all serve the same God. We all get the spiritual gift from the same spirit. And so as we come in unity with these things, we learn to go on our own. And here is something more important. You won't be successful in, in being a good church member or biblical church member on your own. And so what do you do? You rely on the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in the way that you're struggling with. I, a little clue that I, I usually tell myself is when you looked at the gift of the Spirit, right? Because it has the Spirit give you gift, it also allows you to, to grow its fruits, such as love, joy, peace, self-control, right? And so what I do is I look at all of those fruits. As I am growing closer to God, which one of those fruits am I lacking? Hmm. Is love the fruit that I'm struggling with the most? And so what I do is I stay focused on that. My goal is to have genuine love for God's people by the next three months. So you focus on that. Ask God to examine your heart, to teach you how to love. Read scripture about loving people. You know what I'm saying? Meditate on these scripture. And so my point is, wherever you are the weakest, invite God in it so you can flourish. Because sometimes God will use your weakest level to make you the strongest and the best person that you can ever be. A final thing is this. If you are not a church member, but you are a Christian, then there's nothing in the Bible, nothing in the Bible that support that. You must be a part of Christ's community. It's not a choice. Church membership is not a choice. Church gathering or, or fake meal, whatever you call it, is not a choice. You have to be functioning in a church for you to honor God. You cannot do it on your own. 
Jesus came and he is the biggest example of what it means. He went out and he got 12 disciples. 12 disciples from different places, total strangers. Some of Jesus' disciples, he didn't even call them. They came from John the Baptist. But he teach them. He works with them. He served them. And he be with them. That's what it means to be a biblical church member. And why is it necessary? Because otherwise, you will always feel like that piece that don't belong. Until you really start serving, that belongingness, that God placed within you won't be completely fulfilled. But the good thing about all of this, all of this, is that there's always, every single day, a chance for you to start over. And that's the difference between being a believer and being a sinner. See, as we are children of God, walking in this light, every single day we have a chance for our light to go brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. As a sinner, you just live in darkness every day. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And so to be better as a believer, to shine your light, to be that light that stand up on the hill and show everybody your light, it means that you must be functioning part of the body of Christ Jesus. He'll love you. He gave his life for you. He wants you to walk in your purpose. He wants you to walk into your life. The wonderful thing about Christ is that when you become a part of his body, he will make sure that you shine bright. You are becoming a part of his kingdom culture where nothing at all will breed evil or wickedness near you. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but nothing will come near you because you choose to be a part of Christ Jesus' culture. So that's the lesson I have for you tonight. I do have a quick homework assignment. If you are with us, I have a quick homework assignment. In this book, not all Mark assignments, I'm sorry. I have a quick pledge for you. In this book, I am a church member. He make a pledge for each of them. And so today, as we make a pledge for the functioning church member, he asks everyone to read and sign these, these pledge as you go to. Now, since we are online and we're watching online, we can read the pledge together. And then if you agree with it, just put amen in, in the chat or the comments. If you agree to start being a functioning church member after this lesson, just put amen, all right? And here is what the first pledge say. It says, I like the metaphor of membership. It's not membership as a civic organization or a country club. It's the kind of membership given to us in 1 Corinthians 12. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members. Because I am the body of Christ, I must be a functioning member. Whether I am an eyes and hear or hand, as a functioning member, I will give, I will serve, I will minister, I will evangelize, I will study, I will seek to be a blessing to others. I will remember that if one member suffer, all members suffered with it. If one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. First Corinthians 12 verses 26. Now I want to invite you tonight, if you're here with me, to put amen in the chat, to start this today, to be a functioning church member, beginning tonight. Regardless of what you did in the past, it does not matter. This is your chance to start over, to be a biblical church member, a functioning church member, so go ahead and put amen in the comment if you are ready to take the step to be a church member. And after you do that, I do have an assignment for you to do at your journal. Just grab your journal and I want you to answer this question when you leave a lesson from tonight. You are on your own. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to give you an answer to this. How is the love chapter, which is 1 Corinthians 13, how is the love chapter related to church membership. I want you to answer it in your own word. Think about it prayerfully. How does that mean for anything to do with church membership? And allow God to reveal his answer to you.